Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Kaufman. I'm here at the May 2022 Metal Investor Forum in Vancouver. Uh, I'm here with Brett Maddich. Brett is the CEO of Max Resources, one of the companies I invited to speak. And I, I'm pretty sure he's lent me the rock. I don't think he's going to let me keep it. We'll find out later after the, we'll, 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 we'll wrestle for it after the video's over. This rock is a big part of the reason why I started following and I've, and I've bought a fair amount of the stock. Uh, I don't know how well it shows on camera, but you're, you're sort of looking at the oxidized surface of this rock, which is from Uru, which, which Brett will talk about. You can see the, the, the oxides here, the greenish oxides, those are copper oxides. What they're oxidizing from is this nice silvery mineral that you see here. That's chalcosite. Uh, chalcosite is the highest copper by weight um, copper sulfide there is. It's about 80% copper by weight. And as you can see, that's massive chalcosite. I mean, there, there is a crap load of chalcosite in this rock. And I can tell you, it's pretty heavy for a rock. The density is quite high. And this is unusual, right? I mean, you started, you guys started staking here three years ago or something. You got onto these uh, areas far to the north from where this rock's from. Um, and you found this sort of classic Cooper Schieffer. Cooper Schieffer is a deposit that's been mined in Poland for about 400 years, but it's basically sedimentary copper silver. And that kind of looks like standard Cooper Schieffer stuff. But as you move south, you get you got into things that looked a little bit different. And at the southern end, you got into Zuru, which is very different for a couple of reasons. One is vertical, which is a big deal mining wise, but you've also got this thickness and you've got all of this chalcosite. I mean, is that what was expected? I mean, what do the technical guys say when they look at this? Basically, when we're, when we're up to the north of the Cooper Schiffer side, the more we looked at it, we're thinking we're a junior company and it's going to take a lot of drilling. Yeah. So we're, so we're sort of thinking, well, I, you know, we're thinking that it's more than likely not all the same. Like right. the, 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 so it's, it's going to be a sedimentary system, yeah. but is there variance in the, in the type of mineralization? And what was happening was we wouldn't go anywhere unless we'd staked it. Right. So the first one is we staked Conejo. We went out there. It, it didn't even know there was mineralization there. Right. And then we're, uh, we're talking there and the, the guys on the ground were saying, this looks different. Right. And then we brought Chris to have a look at it. And then from there, we knew there was another area to the south and it had a, a lot of copper showings, showings on it. it, was part of the government. Right. And uh, so we went down there and, and Chris was talking to a couple of the locals. And they said, oh, there's this old mine there. And that's, that's where Chris went to that area and, uh, and and that's where we found that. And then they go back and there's guys there that are sort of 80 years of age. Right. They don't know any mining here. So it just goes back to what they think is back in the Spanish. And the Spanish were mining the oxide for the silver. Okay. And as soon as they hit the fresh rock, they'd stop. Okay. So you got a bunch of adits there, uh, but they don't go in very far. But you have been able to, you know, you have been able to sample this stuff Real, in a short period of time, I and mean, you only announced this in the last year, you've already got a substantial number of channels over, you know, elevation and and horizontal distance, right? I mean, yeah. So what? So what? What? What happened was, he went down to the to the river base, and it looked looked the same. Right. So they did a ch uh, a channel sample going across, and that's where we announced the eight meters, at eight and a half percent. That's that's sort of the the high grade end, but right. it's roughly around 10 meters going 6%. And it's true thickness. And then he went up a level uh, where there was addicts again. And uh, that's where he did the sample across that we announced was 16.8 meters at 8.3% uh, plus 140 grams to the ton silver. It's actually open-ended. And this is where that came from. Okay. So what they were tending to do is they were doing channel samples uh, over a meter, sometimes longer. Mm -hmm. And that particular sample that was part of it. It went 1.7 meters. It was 16.7% copper and 298 grams to the sun's silver. But right. what he's saying is that you get straight into the fresh rock. That's what yeah. he's finding. Yeah, you probably can't see it on camera, but there's there's very little oxidation here. It's basically just right on the surface and you're into the sulfites right away. Um, and your entire property package, I know you're, you're, you're adding concessions right now. 
Um, part of the reason why you did a deal with Endeavor Silver was to get to borrow their balance sheet, if you will, to to uh, give the government of Colombia uh, confidence that you guys could could do the spending. But this is like 100 kilometers, 90 kilometers. Like it's massive, massive project. Yeah. So we're we're concentrating on that 90 or 100 kilometers. Um, there's that much exposure. We've never, we haven't done any stream sediment, soils, silts. Right. We've only we've only been channel sampling the mineralization. Uh, but it's it's come to a point that we really had to pick some dual targets. Right. And so that's where we come up with the targets that we got there at Conejo in Uru. Uh, we're a junior company and we have to drill. Yeah. So the whole idea is start from there, we'll still do our regional. Okay. Um, you know, in our view, if you look at this and you take Africa, for example, you've got a 200 kilometer belt here where Africa is with their sedimentary over 200 kilometers, there's 40 mines there. Right. So that's so that's what our strategy is, is go for the low hanging fruit, but the whole system's mineralized. So you find it very hard to believe that there wasn't other prospects that have got soil cover. Right. And I guess I think you get some sort of special dispensation or something. You you, you had crews that even during COVID. So I guess, you know, I know you're about to start IP. The IP, I think, is probably going to be a fairly big deal because this stuff is a very good conductor. So the IP, this stuff should really light up. So you should get a really good sense of your subsurface. But I imagine you must have a lot of stuff in the lab, right? Because you've had a couple of crews out pretty much like a year now or something. They've been, they just keep going from place to place. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of regional stuff in the lab. Um, but we've, we've sort of, we're putting that as, so we've got a geological model putting together for the basin. So we haven't put that out. We're putting the model together. We also don't want to confuse the market. Yeah. That's why we made it very clear to the market. These are the two areas, can I have you where we're drilling? Right. I think if you start putting out all this different one, it's just going to confuse them. Um, but that, all that will add to the geological model. Right. Um, in relation to IP, we're doing uh, around 50 kilometers of line kilometers. So that's a lot of line cutting. Right. So how we see it is, uh, we see the IP starting in two weeks. We're still line cutting. We're doing Euro first. And then from there, we'll be doing Conejo. But what, but what I think would be happening is probably going to drill Euro and we're actually still be doing IP okay. on Conejo. Right. But the great thing about it is while we're drilling at one, we can be doing follow up for the next drill, drill program on the other. Right. And you just, well, you're just, you're in the process of closing a fairly large financing. So you're, you're going to be really well funded for all of this stuff. Yeah, po yeah. Post financing, we're going to have well over twenty million cash. We got eight million cash uh, of warrants and options that are in the money. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're really set there. Institutions post financing will hold twenty percent of the stock, plus we've got Endeavour holding five percent. So um, it was something I negotiated with those in, with the cornerstone institutions. Um, but yeah, it's, we haven't had a drill hole there, um, but they just, you know, they've been doing, uh, a lot of research on it and they can see the enormity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so can I, I mean, it, it's, <clears throat> it's important that, you know, you get really, you, people get jazzed up and, and rightly so, you know, 16% copper numbers, but I, it's important to appreciate the scale of this project. This is a very, very large project sedimentary copper basins, if you're lucky enough to find one, and there's only three or four in the world, um, they do have scale. But what's really interesting about this, um, you know, be, because Caneo, who knows why, it just appears to be much thicker there. Uru, you've got, you basically got vertical feeders, that's where you get the chalcocyte in those. That makes your life a lot easier from a mining standpoint. But your, you know, your strategic vision here um, I don't get the sense, <laughs> I don't get the sense you want to be running a mine. What's the strategic vision? You've got this giant property. You're going to finding stuff all over the freaking place. You're going to start drilling two of them. So what's for you, what's the end game? What do you, what do you want to do here? So the, so the end game, the end game is hold on to the hundred percent of the property as long as you can or the project mm -hmm. and upgrade the prospectivity. Um, and create value for shareholders. Um, the great thing about this, it's not a porphyry. So right. porphyry 
you know, you don't, you don't get a lot of buck for your drilling. We're averaging 200 meters. You know, you get these porphyries, you've got to average 600, 800 meters. So it means we can get a lot of bang for our buck. What I see moving forward is there's going to be different, different parts that would be, since it comes to a stage where we got to spend more money and water shareholders down rather than increase the value. That's what, when you'd be joint venturing. So I see, because we've got the basin, we'd be joint venturing different parts of that at different times. Right. Well, and, and to my mind, as a, as a sort of outside observer and shareholder, you know, if you can pull together a couple of systems like this and you can show the scales there, I don't think you'll be JV and I suspect, no. you, I suspect you will be a subsidiary of someone else. Yep. Which yeah. I'm just fine with at the right price. Don't get me wrong. Well, I mean that, that that's why these institutions are coming. in. Yeah. Right. And the great thing about having a good block of institutions that stay there, you can you can make the suitor yeah pay the high price. Yeah. Right. And that's the great thing about that. So, look, our strategy uh, is fairly simple, and really with Endeavour, it enabled us to keep a hundred percent. Right. And they're, they're basically a white knight. Right. It's a great story. I mean, if you don't know it, you should, uh, you really got to sit down and do some due diligence on this one. I mean, I love this project. It's got scale and grade potential, tons of both, and that's not common. These systems are rare. I, I think if Brett and Chris and the team can prove this up to what it already looks like it is at surface, uh, this, is, this is probably one of the most obvious base metal takeover targets out there. And, and, and as, as Brett said, that's why the institutions came in. I mean, they're, they're not, they're buying it as a basically a holding a potential takeover target, which I think is exactly what it is. Max resources, MAX on the venture. What's the U S symbol, you know? Okay. Yeah, MXR OF. MXR OF in the U S uh, great story, well-funded tons of news flow, great story, high grade. Lots to love. Take a hard look at it. Talk to you later.